you guys want to see something cool? I had a viewer send me some honey a while ago, and I've uh, been drinking it with some tea. Oh, man. That's a treat. That's a treat. Look at that. Right there. Just kidding. I, I ain't going to do that, but I, I, I feel like I could. That gives me hope for the soybeans. But I'd still say these weaker hillsides on corn, they're still screwed. I mean, if you want to see an inch and two tenths of rain, and it's not even sticking to my boots or soft or at all. But so that's how uh, dry we were. Now, this isn't a very good example of what the corn looks like because this guy's just standing here on his own. But that's that's still kind of impressive how that's got actually corn on it. But I think a lot more of them would be like this guy right here. Not even going to be mad about being wet here. Not even going to be mad about it. I think there's going to be a lot of ears like that. And look at how far dented that is already. Now, if you had 60,000 plants with ears like that, you might have something, but we don't have 60,000 plants with ears like that. <laughs> but one of the things we got planned this week is to get some saver installed. You guys will see what that really does. Because that's something that kind of goes along with what I'm going to do today or doing today, and that's cleaning out the last bit of the corn that we have. Sad times and happy times, no more paychecks coming in. But no more grain got to haul out, you know? Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call that. Nine tenths? Nine tenths of the shop here? Uh, heavier rain to the north because I believe my dad said he got like six tenths there in Plano. Still happy. But that sump saver should come in really handy and it should be a big safety upgrade for especially for us, the bean bins. We usually don't have any troubles with the corn bins, but our bean bins... Oh, we might have put a couple of green pods in there from one time or another and plugged it. Uh, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> but that'll help with that. We'll be getting that installed later in the video here. Oh, that's a little soft still. But also in this video, we're probably going to be seeing some cover crops. We'll talk about that. And then also maybe getting some hay seeded. We'll just see what happens. Let's get to work. Back to a vacuum, man. I really don't know how to do this as well. We'll see what we figure out here.
Lola May and I are uh, through Cargill here this morning. We've got still some more corn to back out, not much. That means corn's pretty much done for the day or for last year's corn. Uh, we'll scrabble together you know, half a load or something like that. But we're gonna jump forward installing the Sump Saver. Uh, who sponsored today's video. I really think it's gonna be a good product. We'll see how it uh, how it installs, I guess. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we don't have to use it, you know what I mean? But uh, I really think it'd be a great safety thing for people to not have to get into the bin, to not have to go onto a crust and stuff uh, and try and poke their sumps free. But after that, we'll come back and uh, I do believe we're gonna seed some hay today. See you after the install. So what we're installing today is the sump saver. So you can actually find these at sumpsaver.com or you can get them on grainsupply.com. So at grainsupply.com, he has a, basically anything you kind of really need to find spare part wise for grain bins, uh, you can find on there. But what this is, is we'll dig it out of the box real quick. It goes onto the floor. That don't sound real fun. It's just zip ties to the floor. You just literally zip tie it. Yeah, we have to get under it. No, no, on, it just sits on the floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So this is the sump saver here. Uh, this unit, it's a hydraulic motor that uh, I believe you can you do plug into your tractor uh, if you need to be. Uh, but it just runs a couple of beaters here. You set this above your sump. Which you guys will see this this is the sump this is where all of the grain or the main part of the grain comes out of and the kicker on that is is that andrew have you ever been here when this thing's plugged on us i haven't you've never worked here on this when this one's plugged on us well sometimes they plug and for us this is usually a bean bin most years and uh typically beans seem to like to plug the boast on us uh you get some green pods in there other various obstructions end up in these bins uh, we don't dry as much corn so i figured we, you could have a little more bridging if you dried corn but we really don't do that so we're going to be installing into a bean bin this here could potentially be a life-saving tool because how we unplug these bins is if your sump plugged and then you open your intermediates and those happen to plug you can't take grain out of here without say cutting a hole in the side of your bin which most people don't want to do what we've always done is climbed up into the bin with a long skinny piece of PVC pipe and then you start jabbing down, jabbing down, jabbing down and we use PVC pipe because the auger is actually running too at the same time uh, and then that will hopefully break up that clump but that's really dangerous because you're then in a bin with an auger running um, and then that grain can flow and you don't really know how big of a like a cavity that you might have there that's blocking your sump so you could get sucked down into that grain so that's why this could definitely be a, a some life-saving and headache saving uh, piece of equipment we're going to install it here today we're going to see what it takes to install it doesn't sound like it's too much i mean andrew's actually reading the instructions so i'm just looking oh you're pictures. just looking at the pictures okay <laughs> so <laughs> so we're going to get this done like i said this is available uh, you can hit the sumsaver.com. There's a link down in the description of the website. Just spr scroll through their stuff that they have on their website because there might be a piece to a bin that you might want to have around. Uh, you just really never know. Check them out. What's it got? Colorful pictures. Are we ready to install something? Yeah. Does step one take it out of the box? I feel like that should probably be step one. Behind the sleep somewhere. Here's the tools that you need. The first thing it says to do is to hang the hose hanger, which is heavy. It says behind the sweep a little bit, uh, where the sweep is in its storage position. Sorry for the echo in here. And to put this four feet above the ground at least so that the hoses can hang on it and not get caught by the sweep as the sweep goes around. And I've also made sure that the door has plenty of clearance to come by on the outside as well that way uh, the outlets are messed with by the rain protector door and that's perfectly level right yeah no blocking center punch one center punch two 
Ouch, this sidewall's kind of warm, Andrew. Yeah. drilling the holes for the hydraulic hoses to go through. They should be about 3.5 inches apart. This bin is really hot. Going in the install, it's basically the same distance as the the two dealios, the boppers. <laughs> So this is what you have on the outside of the bin. You got to make hoses to go from these to uh, a tractor or a skid steer or whatever. I tried to get a couple of those made at the hardware store today and believe it or not, they didn't have the right connections. So we didn't get those. Okay, some safer. Here you go. Next thing it is, we're going to uh, install the sump saver. Okay, so then you go to put this actual sump saver near the sump. This is kind of what I was wondering about is actually how do you like, you like bolt this thing down or whatever, like how do you keep it out of the way? And the answer is actually a whole lot simpler than that. Big old heavy duty zip ties. And uh, yeah. Big zip ties. <laughs> Let's zip tie it down real quick. So with bigger sumps, I think this will give you a little bit better option, but uh, we want to have this close enough that it can dislodge the, the like clump that's above it, but we don't want it so close that in between this power sweep that's in the bin and this, uh, that it pretty much doesn't let grain flow out. So we're gonna kind of just go with right here where it's at and uh, Hit it with a couple of the big old zip ties and then once grain gets on it, it holds it there and then we'll route the hoses back around. Zip tie it on there, pretty easy. That's a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be the, like, drilling holes. drilling holes or something like that. So the other thing it says in the instructions is to make sure you find a really hot day be standing inside your grain bin <laughs> so we we followed that instruction pretty good don't we didn't we and then you got a connection on this side here andrew we forgot to start following the instructions but i'm pretty sure that this is the next step this is how you do that yeah there you go put those uh connectors together keep the connectors yeah I'm sure 30,000 of them will be messing with that. And there it is. So that's it. That's was really a pretty simple install. Make sure you have a really good sharp old bit drill thing. Helps significantly. But for kicks and giggles, let's just kind of simulate how we would uh, say you sumped all the way out here. How you would actually get the chance to like fold this up so it's out of the way of the sweep. Let's check that out real quick. Okay, there, boom. Up out of the way of the door, easy there. Sweep, 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 sweep. Clean it up. Oh, you gotta haul that thing out or like set on the, probably just set it outside. Pretty easy, cut it with two zip ties. You ask Andrew for his knife, whoop, whoop, and you're done. And uh, then you just rehook it back up the opposite way. Then you fill it up again. Then you fill it up again. Repeat, year after year after year. And hopefully you get the grain to fill it this year maybe maybe hopefully all the beans don't fit in here yeah wow that'd be a real bad deal <laughs> definitely going to be way safer i know that like millennial he does a lot to uh, uh raise like grain bin safety stuff and the reason people get into grain bins is or one of them is plug sumps so 
this could save you from having to get into a grain bin or cut a hole in your grain bin. Definitely a good product. Let's hope we don't have to use it this fall, but if we have to use it, it's in there. So thank you for sending us the sump saver uh, and uh, all the information that they need is down there in the description. Get a hold of one of your own and uh, save yeah. your sump. Save, save. There you go, Andrew. Save your sump. <laughs> Back to work. It. Okay, so now we're in the big oat field. Here comes Andrew. He's actually over the hill. He's doing a little bit of vertical tillage and it's actually tilling up really darn nice. Really darn nice. We ended up spraying this with some Roundup uh, to get it cleaned up or try and kill the grass. Or It's not like browned off dead yet or anything, but it should die off. We changed our game plan a little bit. We're going to work on the, the health of this little piece here. Uh, fertility wise so what we're going to actually end up doing is probably or it's not really probably we're going to throw a cover crop out in here some tillage radishes with some fertilizer and some cereal rye and really work on the fertility of this piece to try and bump it up a little bit before we seed it back down uh, to hay the plan was to go to hay with it this year but as dry as we got um, we really didn't want to seed into that too bad so we ended up having to make a judgment call. Granted, we got some rain after that and we might have a little more coming, but I think this is the better call is to work on the, the fertility here. That way we can really get a good hay seeding out here, which would just be basically, we'd bean it next year and then turn around, do the same program in two years and uh, get it seeded down. So that's kind of the plan right now. Andrew's just got the big girl running. He's knocking down the grassier areas where the oats were really thin or a skip so that uh, when they do come spread, they're on their, they're loading over there by the hay bales. So they'll be here shortly. But that's what Andrew's doing. He's tilling the rest of the day. And I'm gonna go seed him the rest of the day. Yeah, so we're controlled spilling um, this hay seeding in. It's uh, this is a John Deere drill actually. So we rent this from the local NRCS office. You got to pay to use it, obviously. We don't do enough drilling. It really makes sense for us to own a drill, especially a, a nice drill like this. Even though uh, every time it seems like we get the drill from the NRCS office, we end up fixing on it for a little while. Uh, we kind of let anybody really use these things so we had to fix um oh we just had to fix all that so but we got it drilling good now we are putting down quite a bit of alfalfa a little bit of timothy and a little bit of orchard grass again that's the that's the mix that i really like to use it makes really nice small square bales and the horse people they really like them and when they really like them they'll pay for them so that's why I like them. Back in the drill here this morning, we are actually in the hay field that we seeded last year. I don't know if I did a video on it. Um, we actually ended up seeding it twice. Part of it actually did really good. Uh, it's fine. And parts of this is really not in good shape. So what we did is, uh, or what we decided to do here today, is pretty much throw that orchard grass back into this drill. Try and pump a bunch of orchard grass out in here. See if we can get the orchard grass to grow up. Uh, 
trying to save the seating. So give it another year and if it doesn't work from there, we'll have to figure something out. But this this is just trial and error. We do are putting down like 10 pounds of alpha alpha. Uh, if that's gonna grow or not, I don't know. There's really not any alfalfa out there, but is that enough to make it so that new alfalfa won't grow? I don't know. So that's a trial. I get you. So we're done seeding. Andrew and I are going to go finish backing out the last bit of this truck here. And this grain bin's done. The grain's all hauled and the bins are ready to be filled this year. There we go. All the grain for the year or last year's grain is hauled. Some of the best corn are, or the best corn that I've ever grown. Hopefully sometime in my career I get to grow corn that beats that. Uh, I believe that we can genetically and continuing to improve these fields. We should be able to grow better corn than we did. Probably not going to happen this year, but maybe sometime in the future Mother Nature will bless us with a great growing year and we'll be able to knock it out. Thanks for some savers sending us a sump. I really think that that's something that will improve the safety of these grain bins. Uh, get on the website, check it out. Other than that, thanks for hanging out with us. Like always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, hit the thumbs up on the way out. Adios. Wait, 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 wait. Andrew just asked me a question. He goes, you guys got, you got any idea how you're going to market your straw? Yeah, sure. Hey, I got straw for sale. Big square bales, oat straw, pretty nice stuff. Send me an email. <laughs> we'll How's that for marketing? It. We'll load it. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was pretty good. But, Price yeah. Right. Straw bales. That's well, what I'll a... I'll tell you what. The guy going to see this, you end up with a stabber with four... Oh, four, yeah, we got to get a different stabber. Like, no doubt. <laughs> I didn't realize how important yeah. that was. Yeah, big square bales uh multiple at least three stabbers in a row and shorter so they don't go all the way through the bales so i think you need like four of them and then big enough so you can pick up like three at a time uh because i think that's how like if i hold on a semi i go three but if i hold on the gooseneck i'm just gonna go too high but yeah uh, you anyway. can do on the gooseneck is i've done it too high and that's that one down the middle uh -oh. which i guess they're three by so that wouldn't work as good yeah. Under four foot wide. Oh yeah. Too high, too wide. One in the middle ties them in like big rounds. So. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Now back to work. <laughs>